so nice of you to be here. I haven't seen you for a few years. You don't change. You are as <laughs> radiant as ever. <laughs> well, you're very kind, Roland, and this is uh, wonderful to be here. Thank you very much. As president of AARP Minnesota, lots of things are happening, lots of senior issues. Yes. And I know that there's been a major effort at the state legislature this year to get uh, caregiving bills passed. You know, I didn't realize it until I got some statistic. Of the million and a half baby boomers in Minnesota, probably a third are involved with caregiving for their elderly parents. It's become a major, major issue. So well, which direction are we heading? It really is intergenerational. Uh, you have uh, those in the middle helping their, uh, their parents and also helping the grandkids. Uh, so sandwich generation, so you've to got speak. the sandwich generation in a sense, but the caregiving for seniors, it's uh, very important. Not only do we need to support and help those who are more formally involved uh, in employment in long-term care facilities, which mm -hmm. the legislature at our uh, bequest and others and our request uh, was able to uh, get a COLA passed, a cost of living adjustment for those who work in nursing homes and others. But we're also hoping, we wanted to get it this year, we still are looking to see in the next legislative session the opportunity for that informal care uh, to provide opportunities for uh, members of families to receive perhaps a tax credit mm -hmm. of some level mm -hmm. uh, in, as reflecting the work that is done and the care that is given and then uh, perhaps also to use their uh, sick leave time that they are given uh, uh, at their employment for this purpose. That's happening in some other states, isn't it? We should, it should be happening here as well. It really well. is, and mm -hmm. it should happen here. And when you think about it, some would say, oh, well, why do they need more of that? Well, this actually is a cost savings to the state and to uh, families themselves. Employers is, are sometimes objecting. Are, are, are we overcoming that? They think that it's going to cost them something. Yes, I, I really do think uh, when they, if they take a look at mm -hmm. the number of absentee hours and days that people have to take off in order to care for either a senior member of their family or for children, uh, they're going to find that uh, having this uh, as a flexible way of dealing with that mm -hmm. is going to be a positive impact. Mm -hmm. So hopefully you think this is going to happen this uh, next session? Well, I think so. We had a favorable uh, conversation in the committees. Mm -hmm. uh, they wanted to look at it more. They needed to look at it in the context of the budget as well. And so hopefully in this next session we will be able to move forward on this. Let's talk now about a very important measure that AARP is handling nationally. They think uh, that it's going to be the most important thing they've ever done in terms of political issues. And that's, uh, what is it? Divided we fail. What is that all about? Well, divided we fail, together we can do anything. That's mm -hmm. really the way I like to look at it. We've got 38 it. million members that uh, if they that's get right. together, a lot can happen. But when you talk about divided we fail, we're talking about the division, unfortunately, that seems to occur on two very major issues that absolutely have to be addressed. The first is health care, which we need to have affordable, accessible health care for all. We, we know we need to have these kind of changes. And the second is financial security and retirement. And that's not just for seniors, that's for our children and our grandchildren. Actually, seniors, we've, in our generation, we, in a, we have in some respects taken care of ourselves. But for our kids and our grandkids, there is a real problem because the savings rate in this country is so low at this point. Well, how, I can understand how if you get, there are 48 million uh, uninsured now, right? Yes. Well, that's a pretty clear-cut definition and something has to be done and I suspect it will get done because enough people will be screaming. But this financial thing, how is that going to be handled? I mean, if the fact that a family spends a lifetime and doesn't save very much, how is the government going to assist in that? I, that one I don't understand. Well, the first thing is we need to make sure that Social Security is there for all generations, mm -hmm. not just for ours. And mm -hmm. if you ask your children or your grandchildren about whether or not they think Social Security is going to be there, there is this idea that it's not going to be. Well, mm -hmm. it is going ah. to be. And so we need to reform that. But just Social Security alone, you can't live 
on that. So we need to have the opportunity to continue a form of work in senior years and to expand the base of, of work uh, opportunities. We need to encourage savings that needs to take place. Uh, you know, the idea of automatic enrollment in 401k plans uh, so that if you don't want to, you can opt out. But if you're an employee in a company that has a 401k, you should be involved in that directly. That's, these are just some of the ways in which we can begin can, to get to that. Let me cut in because I want to ask this question. How can seniors get involved in Divide We Fail? What is, is it going to be a national effort but nothing local? Oh, it is. In fact, the Divide We Fail is uniting us together. Here we have uh, the business uh, roundtable partnership mm -hmm. uh, joining with the SEIU, which is the fastest growing uh, union in the country, mm -hmm. with AARP, along with the American Cancer Society, the American Diabetes Society, and many other organizations to say, look, we've got to get at this. So there is a website, what is it, uh, Divide we, uh, Divide, DividedWeFail.org. Mm -hmm. And here's what we, it can be done. First of all, we need people to tell the story. How do these two issues impact and uh, affect their families. Number two, we need people to join together to demand that our candidates and our legislators address this issue. Mm -hmm. We're not asking them the Republican version or the Democrat version or the independent version. We're merely saying you must address these issues. We want that commitment and then we want the commitment if you are elected that you will follow through. And I can tell you this, AARP is going to make sure with its 38 million members that we do have follow through on all of this. We only have a couple minutes left. So let me make this mention that uh, Tony Bennett is going to be appearing October 26 at Mystic Lake, co-sponsored for the first time right. ever, a co-sponsorship with AARP. And what you want to do, if you're interested, is www.aarp.org slash Tony Bennett. Okay? That, I'm going to get out there with my wife. <laughs> and finally, I want to mention about all the marvelous discounts. Let's not forget about that. Uh, we take advantage of uh, discounts with uh, cars and with travel and certainly with insurance, uh, most recently long-term care. Uh, I think that that discount card should go everywhere you go. And I want to thank you very much. I oh, appreciate you. your being here, and as usual, most articulate. Good to see you again, Skip. Well, you are so kind, and I wish you well on this effort. This is great. Skip Humphrey, President, AARP, Minnesota.